It all started as a peaceful day out in the garden harvesting okra. And then the chickens, of course, the chickens. No chickens were hurt. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let it get it together, girl. <sighs> Wipe it off. No chickens were heard in the making of this video. <laughs> I'm holding her by her feet. That's why she can't move. Good morning, everyone. This is Jamarica 5288, and I need to go outside and pick some more okra. So I'm collecting it in the bag, and after that, I'm gonna, I guess I'm gonna have to blanch it and freeze it. So I'm gonna bring you through the process, okay? Let's get to it. All right, let's go. It's on the other side. Seems to be a lot. It's producing a lot more, even though it's getting cold. It's getting in the 40s sometimes at nighttime. I don't know what happened. It turned from 100 to in the 40s. Over like a week. It hasn't been that long. But my okra is still producing, so that's cool. And my peppers. I might pick a couple of peppers, too. So let's go ahead and see what I'm working with, okay? A close-up <laughs> of what they look like when they start to get to the size where you need to pick them. Right here. Where's my hand? Right there, see that size? If you can break them off with your hand, they're still very good. This is the, I think that this is the best stage. When they get bigger than that, let me see if I can find a bigger one. They get a little bit tough, so you gotta, you gotta get them off. You gotta get them off in time. They get woody. By tomorrow, this will probably be double in size and it might be a little bit woody. So I like them when they're little. So let me go ahead and pick them. Now this one here, this is a big one, see that? I may not be able to break it off with my hand. I'm gonna have to cut this off. They get stuck on when they get bigger. So here's another big one down here. Up here, I should say. Right here where my hand is. See that? And you, sometimes you have to twist them off. If you can't twist them off, you gotta cut them off. I got it off. But as long as it's pliable, see that? It's still good. Otherwise, they turn into seed for next year. See if I can find any more. There's one here. One here. One right here. See that? Okay. And that itch is getting me. These things have... um spines on them. There's one down here. Just trying to twist it off. I can't, so I gotta get the scissors. That's what the scissors are for. Right there. See my scissors? Get you down in there and just cut it off. There we go. Let's see if there's any more. They hide out, so you gotta look. Get that leaf off. That's a petal. Okay. I think I got. Well, there's another one. 
hiding. Hiding out. Got you. Okay. Get my basket. I know it looks sparse, but there's more inside. Let me get these peppers before we leave. Oh, there is one more place we need to look. I have some more. Um, I have some more okra growing over here. That's my new garden bed right there, y'all. With the brassicas in it. Let's just divert for a minute. And those are like five little okra plants. We'll see if we get anything from them. But I just sprawled out some seeds, some turnip seeds. Because turnips, man, they don't look good. But they look good if they're there in a bunch. I saw um, another YouTuber who just threw a bunch of seeds out. She had uh, just a patch of turnips. So that's what I did. I just put some seeds out. And all these little ones right here. See that? It must have flew into the ditch. All those little groats. That's turnips. So let's go back over here and see if there's anything here. I hear a chicken. A chicken is out. I don't see it, but I hear it. Nope, nothing. Let's go in the house. I told you I heard some suckers. These two little white ones, they, they becoming a problem. <laughs> don't make no noise. You know you ain't supposed to be out here. You can't hide. You look like a dove. See that white in there? That's, a, that's two chickens. Maybe six sometime. I told you to come out. Huh? Who told you to come out? Run for your life. Run. Run, run, run. Run. And their hands, too. I don't have no trouble with those roosters. I wish they would fly over the gate. I don't get rid of them anyway. Shoot. It's the hands. Alright. Y'all gonna see the fiasco that is my life. These hands. Do it again. <laughs> Here we go again. Go, run, run, run. Go, 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 go. Don't you come back over here. Run. Take two. They're getting smart. They think they so smart. They think they so smart until a cat get them. Then they ain't gonna be smart no more. They're gonna be catnip or cat. No chickens were hurt. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no. no chickens were hurt. <laughs> okay, let it get it together, girl. <sighs> Wipe it off. No chickens were hurt in the making of this video. <laughs> holding her by her feet. That's why she can't move. Back to the okra. Before I was so rudely interrupted. <laughs> the first thing we need to do with the stuff that we got from outside is wash it off. So I'm gonna put it in this pot and I'm gonna wash it a couple of times. And um then we'll go ahead and we'll cut it up and we're gonna blanch it. I also pulled the ones I had in the bag in the refrigerator out. So I told you guys it all added up, right? Look at that, I got about about a quarter, three, qu uh, three quarters of a cup 
let's, let's see, yeah, not three quarters of a cup. Almost a half a pot, right? So I'm gonna wash these off. And I'll be right back with you. Okay, before you cook them, go ahead and get a pot of water, put it on the stove on high with a little bit of salt. Bring that to a boil. We want to have the water already boiling before we put the vegetables in there. We're going to blanch it for about three minutes, but the water, we don't want the water to come to a boil when the vegetables are in there. We want the water already boiling. So turn your stove on, put a little bit of salt in there, just about maybe a teaspoon, and let it come to a boil. We're going to start cutting up the okra. So I am chopping up all of the vegetables, all of the okra. I have the scraps over here. I'm going to give to the chicken. I heard that some of you all were having problems with the, the um, chickens not laying. I haven't had that experience yet, but I'll tell you why. I feed my chickens anything that we don't eat, anything that is, is, is um, going in the trash that is food. And I check to see if they, it's gonna, you know, it's good for them. But most time when we can eat it, they can eat it. I give that to them. I have not had an interruption in eggs at all. Now, I do have feed out there, but I, I don't even know if they're eating that feed. I think they eat that feed when they don't have any other choice. But I supplement it. I, I mean, I feed them any meat, any scraps, anything that you know that has, isn't, hasn't gone. I don't give, feed them bad food. Like if it smells like it's gone rancid, I don't give it to them. But Anything that's on our plate that is getting ready to get scraped into the garbage, every day, every day I do this. I give it to the chickens. And they eat it. Sometimes I, I'll cook a big old pot of rice because I have to, to um, cook rice and then I cook too much and it's going to go in the trash. Anyway, I give them the rice. They love rice. They love oatmeal. They eat pork. They eat beef. I, the only thing I don't feed them because I think it's bad. You know, bad karma is chicken. I don't feed them chicken. <laughs> I don't feed them chicken or eggs. That's it. Everything else they get. Even the vegetables, like if a if a leaf falls off a piece of Swiss chard, I give it to them. And all of this, all these scraps right here that I just chopped off this okra, they're gonna get that too. So let's go and give this to them. All right. The water is boiling, by the way. To bring them put a pot lid over it to see if it comes to a boil quicker. So let's go outside and give them their scraps. My chickens, by the way, have become snobs. They're like, what is that? I ain't eating that, that's not a leaf. But I'm gonna give it to them anyway. They can decide whether they want it or not. I am gonna put it out there. And if they want it, they want it. If they don't, they don't, it's fine with me. Either way, it's either gonna go into the ground to where from which it came, or they're gonna eat it. It's a win-win for me. I got to scrape this ground anyway and put it in my garden. So it's just added fertilizer. I knew this little chihuahua was going to come out. He always does that. Sometimes he gets stuck in the door. So I have it right here in this bowl. And throw it out there to them. Here they are. I don't know. They're like, what the heck is that? Whatever. Whatever. If they eat it, they eat it. They don't, they don't. Let's go back inside. So our water is boiling. Take your okra and carefully put it into the pot. Set your timer for four minutes, three to four minutes. Another pot with some water and put some ice in it. And you're gonna see it boil up, all the slime is gonna develop. We're gonna take this and put it in our, put it in our ice water to stop the cooking process. Now my grandma, she used to drink this water. Any vegetable water that she, anything she cooked vegetables in, she would drink the water. I cannot stomach it, so I tried. She lived to be over 90, but I don't think I can do it. So that's blanching. I'm gonna put this in my freezer bag in the next slide and then we're gonna stick it in the freezer. Just a sec. All right, I got a quart size freezer bag. I took all the ice out of this pot. 
So it's just a pot of cold water and okra. I'm get my spoon out of here. Start scooping the okra out. There you have it. Put this in the freezer. I'm put a little bit of water in here. Remember how you used to get those blocks of uh, vegetables when you were a kid, when your grandma used to buy it? I think they still sell them, but I always feel comfortable putting a little bit of water in there to cover the vegetables, get all the air out. I'd rather defrost a block of ice vegetable than to have some freezer burn okra. And so I'm done. I'm gonna take this and I'll put it in the freezer. If I have any room in there. You know, I've been throwing stuff in here, right? All summer long. Put it in the freezer. And then I'll just use it when I need it. Freezer is full, full of vegetables. Last year, I had tomatoes and bell peppers and what did I have? Habanero peppers. I think that was about it. This year, I got so many different things. I canned a whole bunch of callaloo. Um, Swiss chard, um, taro, man, what else? Yams, kushaw. Now I got the okra coming in. And next, I'm going to have my turnips, my collard greens, some more Swiss chard. The Swiss chard is a biennial, so you plant that, you get that for two years. All the rest of them, they all like that. And I got some beets out there. So go ahead and plant your garden. Do not forget. I mean, I'll see you guys in January when I start my seedlings again. I still got seedlings going. I keep it going. I'm trying to get a greenhouse out here so I can extend my growing season. I'm down in, in central Texas. So our growing season is pretty long, especially fall. Everybody doesn't have that. But if you have, you can grow. Actually, you can grow inside your house. You can grow inside your house. And a lot of houses in New York got that foyer, that front room with that big old picture window. I know. I'm from New York. Go ahead and put it in there. Use it as a house plant and pick it as you go unless it dies on you. And then you don't have, you know, just plant another one. You grow it as a house plant and you can harvest it. Same thing with sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes can be a house plant and you can eat those leaves. But I'm going to get off my little soapbox. <laughs> and I'll see you guys on the next one, all right?